All right, welcome to Bothering the Band. We're here with Jim Ward, who most uh, everyone should know. If not, <laughs> dig yourself out of a hole. Um, he was in, you started at the drive-in. Mm -hmm. um, you started at a great band called Sparta. You're releasing a solo record soon called Daggers. Yep. What haven't you done? Uh, didn't go to college for very long. Fair enough. I did, I did try. Um, I have not done a lot of stuff. <laughs> sure. Well, now you're doing Bothering the Band. Thank you for letting us bother you. Um, I have to say the Paper Fish uh, song I love. Thank you. And playing it all day. And then also um, Trust the River, uh, top to bottom, T to B, as I say. Is T to B, thank you, man. Fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that is two examples of stuff that happened quickly. And I think that's usually a good sign. Yeah. So weird enough, um, we try to space these interviews out. Um, but because of our technical difficulties yesterday, um, we were <laughs> that's interviewing. Me. That's code for me being an idiot. <laughs> I didn't want to throw you under the bus, man. Oh, no, please. I'm very comfortable there. <laughs> um, we were interviewing a guy named uh, Iman McGrath from uh, Toronto, mm -hmm. a great musician. And one of the questions was, uh, what's, what was the first album you bought? And he mentioned an At the Drive-In record. Hmm. Yeah. So I was like, you're never going to fucking believe this. <laughs> it was pretty wild. It was pretty... Um, Fateful. It's funny how those that starts to happen when the years go far enough past that you, you sort yeah. of there's a whole generation of of uh, musicians that that uh, bought stuff that I made a long time ago. It's such a nice thing when people will reference that. I still yeah. take that as such a compliment. I just couldn't believe that's the one he threw out there, and he had no yeah. idea that I you know we were talking with you too. You know, yeah. So that was uh, fate musical. Fate. <laughs> Kismet is what I like to call it. Um, all right, so here we go. What's the last right. thing you made? What's the last what? What's the last thing you made? Um, you mean food-wise? Anything. Or... Anything. So this morning I made uh, vegan or plant-based biscuits and gravy, uh, which is maybe like a every now and then weekend treat for the family. What's the carb count in that? A lot, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think too much about that stuff, but I guess it does kind of add up. Um, I made that, and then we just finished making a uh, container, a raised bed container that we're going to be growing some, some vegetables in. And I, I took a little design off the internet and tweaked it so that I could use cedar fencing planks because they're super affordable compared to crazy big cedar planks. Yeah. What, what are you going to grow? Uh, so we, are, we have like a little incubation station in my kitchen with uh, cherry tomatoes and some, some regular tomatoes and some basil or basil if you're fancy, uh, some lettuce, some summer squash, some jalapenos. Gotta have jalapenos. Parsley. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I got, uh, I have some thyme, I have basil. You always have to have basil. I have radishes. And oh, nice. Radishes, cauliflower, and jalapenos as well. Oh, cauliflower is a good one too. I don't know. I don't think I gave it enough room, so we'll see what comes of it. Might just yeah. This is our first time, and, and honestly, we've we've done quite a bit of internet looking, mm -hmm. uh, but I think some of it is just real world sort of experience. Like obviously, El Paso is a weird city as far as we're a high elevation, but a, a really hot, dry climate. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But excited. Okay, so since you made. That's the last thing you made. What's the last thing you broke? Oh, that's a good. I, so I, I'm really klutzy. I break a lot of stuff and I can't think of anything off the top of my head. What is the last thing I broke? It kind of, it's one of those things that is like a, a constant in, in my relationship where my wife is always just like, how the fuck did you, how did you break that? It, it could be anything. I'm trying to think what the last thing it was. That's a good question. I'll think about it. Let me know if you come. Are you are you yeah. prone to breaking like unbreakable things? I just, it's not like, I mean, like anybody, I have a temper sometimes and sometimes it's throwing. I'm a thrower for sure, which is something I've worked on my whole life because uh, 
plenty of times I've thrown guitars on stage, never at a person, but just, it's sort of my, uh, my release is just like, so I've never, I've never thrown a guitar for a mediocre show. I'll put it that way. Like it's either a really great one or just a really shit one. So most of the time you're in that middle area, no guitars are getting thrown. And I try not to throw, seems a little silly to throw guitars at this age, but, um, that will have thrown a lot of phones in my life. <laughs> I identify with the throwing more than you. I want to admit. It's something uh, that you have to like, like there's an age where it's not funny anymore, where you're just like, you're a grown ass man. Like you cannot throw a phone and think that that's okay. And, um, you know, so I'm trying to be better and, and be a little more responsible and not waste things. But do you find it gratifying? You know, that's the thing is I really don't like it's not, it's just that that instant re like the the instant release and regret. We are like, oh, now I have to go get a new screen on my phone. And it's quick. Like, this is stupid. It's very quick. This, I'm so stupid. Yeah, it's, it's not very gratifying. I'll be honest. No, but sometimes, you know, it happens. So. Ah, I, I get it. Um, so I, I've said this a lot. This is going to turn into a drinking game with this podcast. Every time I say this next thing is, uh, we, we come up with these questions beforehand, mm -hmm. it's a whole different ball game when we have to actually ask the person. That's so here, here we go. Have you ever seen Spartacus at a drive-in movie theater? I haven't. There <laughs> is, there is this picture going around on the internet though, um, of, I don't know what I assume it's in a city called Sparta, but there's a drive in there and it says it's a big sign that says Sparta drive in. And I get that sent to me about once a month from somebody. It's just like, on the internet. So <laughs> have you ever seen this? And I'm like, I have. Yeah. But no, I've never, I've been to drive in theaters uh, when I was very young. I remember going, but no, I've never seen Spartacus at a drive in theater. No. Yeah. Uh, the last, uh, I, I saw Roadhouse in a drive <laughs> solid way too young for it too i was like heaven. <laughs> solid movie <laughs> great solid movie, movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right this is a this is a real uh what's the i don't know the word i'm looking for but um do you say reese's pieces no. or reese's pieces i say reese's pieces okay have who you says heard other say, who okay. says Reese's Pieces? I feel Nobody like I did as a kid. I mean, before you could understand why that would sound ridiculous, <laughs> there's no pieces of anything. Yeah, it's uh, auto-corrected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, besides musical instruments, uh, what else have you, what's something else you've taught yourself? So I do, I do a ton of, not a ton. I really like to, to work with wood. Okay. Um, and I, and a few times I've done some, like we, so we've, we've had um, some businesses and all, I, like I sort of burned out 2008 at the, at the end of the threes tour and, and came home and put the band on the shelf and just said, I don't, I don't want to do it at this level for now. Um, probably more dramatically than that, but you the, way I, the way I remember it is I was like, I need a break. I'm sure it was me throwing a fit, but uh, when I came home, I I opened a bar with a couple of friends, and we we turned we turned uh, an old it, it was called Garden Mart. It was like an old nursery, sort of in our side of town, um, totally dilapidated, falling apart, just, just kind of a shithole. And so we got it real cheap, and then we put six months of work into it. And I really discovered how much I love to like. I was always a guy in the band that would build a loft in the band. Um, and the summers I would spend with my grandfather, and he would teach me little woodworking things or whatever. But it it is it is like intrinsically in my soul to make stuff. Um, and and by doing that, we found out my wife and I have been together a real long time. That's the first time we ever sort of found out we like to work together and create stuff. She's she's a designer, and I'm sort of like the the fabricator that she can't fire. <laughs> it's a good relationship <laughs> where she's like, this is what I imagine. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to build a really shit version of that. And then you're going to, you know, explain why it looks terrible and then we'll keep getting better at it. So we've, we've now done about uh, three or four businesses like that. Okay. So sort of taking empty shells and building things. So I love to make stuff. That's why I was saying I built a container. Um, I just got, 
uh, an arc welder, which I'm pretty excited about to learn welding. That's cool. How are you with the Dremel? Can you do pretty, like pretty good? Yeah. yeah. So Dremels are great if you're young and working on guitars and and should not be using a router. I still don't use routers. I'll be honest yeah. with you. Like they they just destroy shit at a pace that I'm not prepared to uh, to grapple with. Right. Yeah. But Dremels Dremels are like cool. Okay, it'll take me an hour to get this you know pickup cavity done. Um, but I won't cut the guitar in half in, in like a third of a second. So that's good. Can you, can you do any like intricate, like writing with the Dremel or anything like that? I've never really done like the engraving stuff. I've always used it as, as like, especially for like a tiny, like the tiny grinding tool or like the cutting tool. So if you're doing something with like um, quarter inch steel rope, basically, or whatever, like, it's so hard to cut that stuff evenly and then you get a dremel and it just makes it so easy with the little cutting okay. bit but yeah no i've never done like i'm sort of a b big projects not so much intricate not, not so good at the details <laughs> well that brings my next i'm going to jump ahead here is what's harder owning a club venue tricky falls is that correct yeah it was yeah or owning a vegan friendly cafe which one's di more difficult so different in different ways. And I always say this one thing that is so it's a difficult lesson to learn when you deal with people and, and food because mm -hmm. one, everybody eats. So everybody is going to come and everybody has their own taste and everybody expects certain things. And if you mess it up, you have to really work hard to sort of earn that forgiveness. So if someone's like, I don't like the way this tastes, I always give the example of like, at Eloise, if somebody doesn't like something, I have to kind of do backflips to make it work or to fix it or to hope they come back or hope they don't leave a bad review. And at the end of the day, I want people to like what we do and I want to take pride in it. Yeah. But then at a show, if someone's like, you're terrible, I'm like, get the fuck out. Right. <laughs> so it's like two, two separate worlds. And I, I really enjoy being back on the road when I can be like, you know, <laughs> like a little less, less backflips, you know? Yeah. Um, but Tricky Falls was its, was its own beast. Um, and someone was asking me the other day if we're ever going to do anything because it we our lease ran out in 2018. So it's been three years of not doing it. And I miss, I definitely miss the, uh, I love being around bands and shows and tour. Like I love that stuff as much as anything in life. Um, but the the business side of it is is inc incredibly hard. And it gave me a, a, a real respect for the people that I had been playing under for a long time. So I think it totally changed. Not that I was like a terrible guest in venues throughout my career, but um, I definitely take a little more time now to, to acknowledge every single person at the club and thank them for what they do and understand that, you know, the guy cleaning the dressing room has probably been there since 10 AM bringing in the stuff that bands aren't even going to touch or they're going to spill on the floor or they're going to throw at the wall. And there's a, there's just a different respect for it once you're on that side. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll always be grateful for that. And if we do do it again, then we would, we would find a, a little bit more of a sustainable way of doing it. So. Wow, man, that's super fascinating. It's just uh, you, it's funny. You get to see like both sides of the, of that performance perspective. Yeah. And I've had, I've had the very unique experience of one being in a club around a band that didn't recognize me, but name checked me and then spit on the floor. And it's a weird thing for your head to be like, can you not disrespect? Like, we have to clean that up now. And then at the same time, knowing that they don't know who I am by, by sight, but they know who I am by reputation. And then they're talking about that, like, oh, it's cool to be here because he owns part of it or whatever. Yeah. And, and part of you wants to just put them in timeout. You know, but but it's like I was I was young and in a band too, so I get it. But it's a unique experience for sure. I mean, it's very similar to that restaurant uh, analogy you had, where it is. It, it, once I think every I grew up working in restaurants. I think everyone should have to work in a restaurant in their life. It teaches yeah. you how to treat a server, a chef, all these people yeah. that have contact with your food. <laughs> and ability, all this stuff where yeah. now if you're on the other side you're dining out you know not to 
you know, be an asshole. Well, because it's a way, and, and again, like I'm not a particularly religious person, but, but the golden rule is so beneficial in so many situations. Like, oh, w- would you want someone to talk to you that way? <laughs> no, of course not. Would you want someone to come into your house and spit on the floor? Of course you wouldn't. Like, it, and sometimes you just have to dumb it down to that conversation. Like, do you, do you want me to punch a hole in your wall? Like, no, you don't. So don't do that to our club or don't do that to our bathroom. You know what I mean? Like it's sometimes you got to dumb it down, but it's such an easy go-to thing. Oh yeah. And when you flip it like that, yeah. Would you want me to come to your house and yell at you because no, no you don't. <laughs> of course. Sometimes you run out of hot sauce. It fucking happens. You know, I, I've been yelled at for running out of hot sauce. Oh Speaking yeah. Of hot sauce. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the rule where you're at in, in El Paso. Well, like, do you go green or do you go red? I know there's something so, down. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, so the great thing about El Paso, one of the great things about El Paso is that it is a, essentially it is a landlocked port city, right? So we, we have a, a tremendous amount of, of uh, travel and commerce for the last 500 years. This has been why it's called El Paso, which means the pass. This is, this is the point in two mountain ranges that you can get through. That's why we are here. There's a, a river that runs between both sides of our which is now two countries, but wasn't two countries before, obviously. So in that creates a lot of what I think of as like culturally brackish water, right? So we're not one or the other. We're sort of, a lot of people will say what's hotter at this restaurant. So like, you know, do you want green or red on your enchiladas? What's hotter? Well, we use this, whatever. Okay, I'll take that one. Or Christmas. Christmas Christmas is where we get red, red and green together. Um, it depends. And also we're so close. I mean, we're, we're basically in with New Mexico. New Mexico is such a green chili capital that that comes into play a little bit. But it's a really unique um, sort of cultural spot for, for food, especially because it's northern Mexican food, which yeah. is different than central Mexican food, obviously, and totally not Tex-Mex. Like that does not that does not exist here. We do not have that here. So you don't go to Chili's a lot? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we obviously have a Chili's and I think, you know, they've been doing booming business because they were not responsible in the COVID era of, of opening. So restaurants were allowed to open. Um, and if you had a bar in your restaurant, then you could serve alcohol as long as it wasn't more than 50% of your sales. Okay. So, so the big corporate chains like just were assholes, essentially. Yeah, I'm not surprised. No, why would you be? <laughs> <laughs> why would you be? All right. So speaking of El Paso, you're just leading me into these great questions. I've been Uh, been doing this a while. What's your favorite indoor activity in El Paso? Oh, man, that's a good question. This will be followed, obviously, by what's your favorite outdoor activity? Um, So like, I'm a fan of bowling, not good at it, but sort of like a community. I like sort of community sports. Or things that you can do. Um, oh, you know what would be my favorite thing is to go to basketball games, which are indoor. Okay. Um, my wife is a huge college basketball fan, and I am, am have I drank the Kool Aid. I love it too now. Um, we we're big supporters of our local college, which is a, a great school. Especially if you know anything about basketball, our school was the first. If you know about the '66 miners, yeah. So. Yeah it's a cool history to have and there's such a great tradition here and our uh you know the arena they play in is awesome so that would be my favorite indoor activity okay and so outdoor um it's a good question shooting hoops i mean but i don't i don't actually i'm terrible which is a waste (laughs) of a of a six foot almost two inch guy in this city i can't i'm just not very athletic I do like playing golf as much as uh, it's a weird. I actually played golf in high school because it, it was the sport that I, I could get my sports credit without having to go to yeah. a locker room, which was mm-hmm. like, all right, I don't want to go to a locker room. So and and you get it. You get to leave school to practice. You get to be outside. You get to be essentially left alone. Yeah. And then on tournament days, you get the entire day off. You get to go hang out with your friends and be terrible at golf like we weren't good. So it didn't matter. Like there was no pressure on us. 
our only pressure was like, show up. Like, can you just come to the tournament? Yeah, sure. It's a day off school. No problem. <laughs> but I do, I do enjoy that sport also because it is, it's sort of me against my own abilities as opposed to me and another human that I'm trying to, to beat. Yeah. It's not really my thing. So I don't even care. If you go play with friends, I don't either keep score or care at all. Yeah. But it is fun. It's nice to be out there as, as un, uh, environmentally friendly as golf courses are. Yeah. You know, I like that. Good answer. What, who, who's your favorite Batman? Uh, that's a good one. Is George Clooney a popular answer? Do you want me to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the worst, right? I'm a pretty big Christian Bale fan, so I'd go with him. Yeah. Clooney, uh, Clooney was the one with the nipples, right? Yeah. That suit had the nipples. I think so, yeah. I think that was the controversy. Yeah, that's pretty wild. But Christian Bale, have you ever seen Empire of the Sun? Yeah, it was Scorsese, right? Uh, no, it's uh, um, Spielberg. Oh, that's right. Okay. The John Williams score. Christian Bale's like 13 yeah. years old in it. John Malkovich. It's, uh-huh. it's like one of my favorite movies that I can always go back to, but I sort of love that actor, Sun then he's sort of around the same age and you yeah. sort of grow, grow up with with somebody and watch their careers. Of course. I like Christian house. Bale because he has a red beard like mine. Mm. I can't tell, but very similar beards. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you crack your knuckles? I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. Not compulsively, but I will. I will do it for sure. Do you have any other bad habits? Not that that's a bad habit. But. Uh, I bite my nails. Oh, devils. I bite my nails. And then on top of that, um, when I get either uncomfortable, I guess uncomfortable is a word, not really nervous, but if I get uncomfortable, I bite my lip. Like I do this like yeah. constantly. Um, it's a real tell sign that I'm not feeling super comfortable. And I also end up making my lips bleed, which is just embarrassing. Like gushing? Not gushing, just <laughs> like, you know gross enough <laughs> I bite my lip off that's a bad sign you just have scars like that <laughs> <laughs> um okay this is a great question what's scarier the band flock of seagulls or an actual flock of seagulls a flock of seagulls like an actual flock of seagulls why would you be scared of a band first off <laughs> i think it's the hair i mean but is the hair gonna like pummel you to death like you're gonna die by beak I don't want to die by beak. <laughs> I got a. Re- that's a note. Timestamp that one. I don't. That's we have. That's the whole theme of this episode. Is I don't want to yeah. die by beak. Yeah. <laughs> it's truth. Oh man. What a shitty way to go. If you think like if you watch birds or whatever the birds, name of that yeah. is, right? That's a terrible, terrible fucking way to die. Because yeah. it would be long. Peck, peck to death. Peck to death. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to go with uh, an actual flock of seagulls. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So you're on a road trip with people from El Paso. Okay. Phil Ox, Beto O'Rourke. Wait, the who's, gr- the first, who's the first one? Phil Ox. Okay. I don't know who that is. Oh, he's a musician. I thought you would definitely know who he was. Huh. Anyways, we'll keep going with this weird question. Um, from El Paso? <laughs> what's that? From El Paso? Mm-hmm. Still lives in El Paso? I think he's dead. So, so uh-huh. not, cur- not currently living? No. How do you spell yeah. it? Uh, O-C-H-S. Phil Ox. So usually it's like the Bobby Fuller. People go with the Bobby Fuller. Oh, uh, yeah. We try to keep you on your toes here. At Father Dude, Andy. you got me. I'm looking it up. But go on. Now I'm just curious. Okay. okay. So, so, so me and Beth don't read it. So and you're Phil. on a road trip with Phil Ox, Beto, yep. Beto O'Rourke, and mm-hmm. the gran- and the granny from Beverly Hills Hillbillies, who is also from El Paso. I did not know that. That's amazing. Who rides shotgun? Who rides in the back seat? And who rides in the trunk? <laughs> okay, is is Phil currently alive in this yeah. scenario? You got to Google. We got to Google. Pro- that producer will Google. That is so crazy. See, now I'm going to ask, because Beto knows everybody from El Paso, so I'm going to ask Beto if he knows this dude. That's so nuts. I had no idea. 
Yeah, he was born December 19th, 1940 in El Paso. Um, well, he obviously is not going to be in the front seat because I didn't even know about him. Yeah, he doesn't. Wait, who, am I driving? Is that, the, yes. is that the premise of this? Well, it's a hypothetical question. So you Yeah, can... so I, I have been on a road trip with that, though. So he's going to sit shotgun because that's where he sat last time. Um, and then we're going to put Grandma and Phil in the back. Are you guys close? Yeah, we're good buddies. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he, he just sent me an, a real nice note about the single. And mm -hmm. I told him I wish he was the one that was reviewing it because it was like a 14 inch long text message oh yeah all these reference because he's he's every time he he's so fucking smart he references all this stuff and says you know this reminds me of this and i was like man i wish you were writing my reviews because this is like the best compliment oh man this you should dude, get him to start reviewing albums <laughs> i think i think people kind of get him to do this so just because he has such a reputation of the music stuff like he always gets broked into doing things like that that's pretty cool and he's good at skateboarding. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if I'd say good. <laughs> right? As good as me, so therefore he's great. Oh, yeah. All right, then I'm in. <laughs> sure. Oh, he was. his dad was in the military. That's why they got here. We yeah. get a lot of those. Okay. We have a huge, huge army. I'm still looking at Phil Hawks. Okay, uh, I'll read more read, about him later. You can read more about it. Like, you can Fascinating. Read. <laughs> okay, so he's he for the sake of this he's alive so he's not in the front seat um and then where's the granny from beverly hillbillies going she's still alive no definitely not she was a thousand years old when that show was out yeah but i mean in this situation yes absolutely okay so i have to choose one of these two people to put in the trunk i mean i don't think it'd be very nice to put a grandma in the trunk right so sorry phil buddy that sucks. I just found out about you and I'm putting you in the trunk. That's rough. <laughs> that is rough. At least, I mean, at least we didn't find out he was a... Uh, he was death, a talented clarinet player. What's that? He was a talented clarinet player. So, you know, you can fit a clarinet in the trunk. Yeah, you're good. Tear it up, Tear it up Phil. <laughs> <laughs> you already answered uh, one of my questions was, do you, like, do you follow sports? What was your relationship with sports? Oh, I think we, yeah, we could, I could go further into it if you want. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put the mic over here and you can just go. <laughs> uh, I like the, I like the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, nice. I like the Tottenham Hot Spurs, although I don't follow them very much. Just if you have to pick a, a soccer team, a football team, that would mm -hmm. be my team. Um, I don't like American football at all. I don't either. I find it to be uh, oh, an incredibly lazy sport. Ah, oh, man, you and I. You work for eight seconds. You know what I mean? Eight seconds, and then you have a five-minute break, and then eight seconds, and then a five-minute break, and then, you know. I read somewhere that... The... I would, although I would never tell anyone who played football that to their face because they would just pound me. <laughs> I get that part of it. You wouldn't tell a linebacker. You don't do shit. Uh... Yeah, please don't hurt me. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, I read somewhere where, like, American football players, the amount of, like, activity like running jumping catching throwing is is uh under under like seven minutes that's what i'm saying of a three and a half hour game yeah but we have we have a really like a a running back from el paso that's doing really well plays for green bay um and i respect that i respect that job yeah i mean i respect him i just don't dig it like yes yeah, i find it boring and and I find it very boring and concussive, I find and, it concussive. Yeah. yes and I, I think they should go both ways, the offensive and defensive teams. Well, ACDC. I think they need to go both Just ways. one team. Yeah, Just I see what you're team. saying. There's too many. And the players. other thing is, like, when you get to – I don't really follow professional sports as much because when you get to that level, everybody is so – it's like watching the NBA. I like it, but it's just – they're so good that it takes, it takes, like, a certain element of, like, college basketball, they still make, mis like, crazy mistakes. Like they yeah. lose games on just like he stepped out of bounds. Like, how did he step out of well? Because he's <laughs> 19, you know, and he made a mistake. Yeah. I don't know. I still, I still like the element of that. Surprise mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Have you ever lived in a trailer park? I have not. No. Okay. I have not. There. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a yes or no question. Yes, that's it. No. Um, what's your response when a friend tells you something you're indifferent about? I don't care. <laughs> so you don't try to sugarcoat it or anything? Yeah, I just don't care. Sometimes I will say that's like uh, my go-to line would be, I'm not going to fuck with that. Okay. If it's, if it's like a good friend and he's like, can you believe that guy is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm not going to fuck with that. Like, I don't care. That's not worth the energy or the uh, conflict that this is going to cause. Like, I just can't be bothered. That's really great. I'm definitely. For better or worse. That. Yeah. I'm definitely stealing that. Yeah, so I'm not going to fuck with that, and I don't want to die by beak. Those, those are the takeaways so far. Man, he died by beak. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is the most important question. Um, okay. When putting on, when getting dressed, do you do sock, shoe, sock, shoe, or sock, sock, shoe, shoe? Simple answer for me, because I don't wear shoes in the house, and I like to put on my socks before I put on pants. Because okay. I, I don't like to roll up my pants to pull my socks up because okay. it seems incredibly inefficient. Okay. So I'm not a, laughing at you. I'm laughing. It's a very, I'm laughing at the thought, like how much intelligent thought that you put into that. You're like, I'm, not a, wasting I'm, a lazy, I'm a lazy human being. That's the thing. You're efficient. Yeah. You could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, would you rather work in a psych ward or be the warden of a jail? I feel like, I feel like, well, that's a tough question. Cause I was going to say, I feel like working in a psych ward would give you the opportunity to make maybe a better, uh, to make somebody's life better because I, I, I am deeply understanding of mental illness and, um, wish we talked about it more. I talk about it a lot now. We never talked about it as kids growing up, like in, in bands, you never talked about it when it's so obvious that so many of us are dealing with things. And that's probably why we're in a band in the first place. Um, so my, my gut reaction is to say psych ward because I feel like you could, help. but then I just watched Hannibal. And then I think about that psych ward and I'm like, that's creepy. True. And I also just read a book by a guy who spent five or six years in prison and learned how to read became a poet um, and is now a published poet while he what, he learned how to read and write basically in prison and dealt with prison that way. So then I, then I think about that. So I don't know, man, I could go either way. I would like to go where I could be more useful. That's, okay. I'm going to dodge that question with some. No, that's a great answer. It's a very insightful answer. Um, so I think we're going to try to see you at Fest this year. We're, we're working on that. I know. We, uh, we saw that pop up, and this is probably like a week ago. And we started counting the bands we've interviewed or are about to interview. And I'm like, wow, there's a bunch. So we're going to try to, try to see you, uh, definitely. And at this moment, let's plug some stuff. Okay. Talk about Daggers, man. So Daggers is a record that I made... The, the quick story is in the middle of all this stuff. Well, here it is. Trust River came out in April. Obviously, mm -hmm. everything got, like I like to say now, uh, plan and scrap. The year 2020 was just plan and scrap. Mm -hmm. Everything got sort of scraps. I was at home. I started using just sort of this, uh, this uh, method for dealing with things is for me writing riffs late at night. That's sort of my therapy when it's not actual therapy, which I totally recommend and participate in. Um, but so writing music late at night, and then it was kind of fun and interesting. And I sent Tucker a text and was like, do you want to play on these demos? Because I need a drummer to play on them. And I'm watching you on Instagram playing your house. So I know you can do it because you're there. And he said, yeah. So we ended up doing like, um, like within two weeks it was sort of the music was written um and then he went and recorded all the drums in one day which is insane because it's tucker and then uh ben i asked ben if he wanted to plan it because we had sort of talked about this a bunch of times over the years like we should do something and then of course just you're busy with your band and 
his band and Mm -hmm. um he said yeah i'm literally nothing to do so it just got it was really lucky in that sense that everybody kind of had the time and we had already built this foundation of one of of wanting to do things with each other musically um so ben kind of critiqued some stuff and played on all of it obviously and then i i started writing vocals and had a few friends guest on some stuff and um the next single is Shauna Potter and me, Shauna from War on Women. Okay, um, it's a it's a it's a killer jam. Like I'm just super stoked on all this stuff. I had a bunch of friends play on it. Um, turned it into Dine Alone, which I'm under contract with. Um, and they were like, "Fuck, this is actually really good. Can we put this into a?" Because I just wanted to sort of like, I just want to put this out on Friday. And they said, "Can we take this a little bit more serious? Will you take this a little bit more seriously?" And I said, "If you think so, sure." Um, and I'm really glad that they pushed me in that direction because it got a proper setup and, um, you know, it's just all made with friends. It was all made with friends that I love and people that I respect. And even down to the artwork, Christian Helms did the artwork with his, his company. If you know Christian Helms, he's a big time uh, designer, branding mm -hmm. dude, but um, it just, it's all just so much love went into it and it was such a, a rad experience because of because of that and it was sort of a surprise it wasn't meant to be anything other than hey tucker you want to mess around with these things i'm playing that's and great sounds very organic and i think it's going to be fun to tour on and to play live and um because i get to play under my name and i can play my rules i'll play anything i sang on a record yeah and that's so that's like a pretty long list of stuff that I can do. All right, I gotta make a request. Turquoise Dream. Yeah, for sure. Um Thank never you. See you. That's the one. That song that one was hitting the heart right now. That song had a hard birth. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah, that's one of those songs that was around for four years before it made it onto anything and went through about 10 different recordings, five different lineup, just like it was all over the place and I've loved that riff, that opening riff. I've loved yeah. it since the, since the day it came out and I just could not, couldn't bring it home. A lot of like give and, give and take with that song, you know, trying to find the right place. A lot of like um, respecting the song, telling you that it's not ready when you try and force it out and then you listen to it and it's so obviously not ready to be a song. <laughs> I believe I'm in that. It, I'm glad it forced its way out finally. No, it, it finally just was like, all right, now's the time. I think it's David Garza who produced Trust the River. He yeah. he's like a sh he's a shaman, you know. So <laughs> he knows how to like. He's like my midwife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to. I hope yours. <laughs> oh, you'll love it. Oh man, it's my Jim, musical midwife. <laughs> musical midwife. We have so many good like slogans for this episode. <laughs> I hope. I hope we if you're ever at a loss for the name of a track you got to go with um death by beak <laughs> that'll be my right. well so i used to like i used to have all these funny names for things or like <laughs> like that like i would say like oh and i i was about to tell you like three names of my future hardcore band that may yeah. or may never happen but then i remembered that i i did that in an interview one time and a band stole my name and used it and now I can't say that stuff publicly anymore. No. Okay. So you can't say that. Do you know what, can you say what band it is? I wouldn't. I'll tell you when this is done recording, but I won't, okay. I won't tell you for other people to hear just because it's not dogging on them. And I wouldn't, yeah. want to, you know, and maybe also it's possible. They didn't know that I had said that in an interview. Okay. Well, but it's weird because they were, wait, I'll tell you there. <laughs> Everyone, this has been bothering the band. I'm I'm getting done with this so I can hear the name of the band now. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrap uh, up. Follow Jim. Uh, it's Jim Ward official across the board, correct? All the way across. Yeah. Yeah. Follow him. Listen to his music. Uh, Daggers is out June 11th. Jim, thank you so much for doing. Oh, that. thank you. Thank I you. This is really fun. You. I enjoy this concept very Don't. much. We do too. We just get to mess this around the best. with your bands. Um, don't die by beak. <laughs> yeah. Life goal. <laughs> All right. There we All go. right. <laughs>